Every magic trick consists of three acts. No, it's not lights, camera, action. It is the pledge, the turn, and the hardest part that makes everyone clap. The prestige. Why must I show three acts? Why does every story have three parts? The beginning, the middle, and the end. Why is there no end to all wars? You may wonder. Well, you are about to find out. As I tell you the tale of three cities. All this sounds quite dramatic, like a rap music video. But it's 2020. And everything about the future of these three places is about to be unearthed from the past. As I take you on a journey into the future of these three cities. The first city is a place where the sun boils even the blood of its inhabitants. Called Bengaluru, it was earlier referred to as Bendakaluru, which in the ancient language of Kannada means the city of boiled beans. The wandering Hoysala king Veera Ballala was offered boiled beans and was saved from the jaws of death and starvation by an old lady. Out of love, kindness and gratitude towards the lady, he pledged the name of this glorious city in South India. South India has an interesting story, a tale of bloodshed, war and refuge, where the past has not been very kind to its inhabitants. Aryans from the northern part of the continent chased down their darker complexioned brothers, the Dravidians, towards the jungles and the forests of the southern parts so that they could have complete monopoly over the fertile plains of the north. Well, push down is a relatively pleasant term. Dravidian culture was disregarded and darker skinned people were portrayed as demons in religious texts and stories, while the good gods, the heroes, the Aryans of the 16th century were busy establishing a system to divide humanity into classes, popularly known as the caste system in India. Many good men gave their lives in their fight for freedom from these systems in society. Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation, even accepted a slow fight to the death as he stood steadfast in his hunger strike to bring peace to a country of turmoil. After peace returned, the city now flourishes as the Silicon Valley of Asia the garden city and a safe haven for independent filmmakers and rappers such as Rakshit Shetty, Brother V, TK and Yash. The second city is a place where the blood freezes as soon as one steps outside the safe confines of one's house. Named Waterloo, the name historically represents the battle where Napoleon Bonaparte gloriously lost to two armies of the Seventh Coalition. The turning point in history was that the Battle of Waterloo put an end to the Napoleonic Wars. Compared to both children, Waterloo is far behind. If you're talking about time zones, the University of Waterloo boasts as the world leader in connecting bright students to industry through the prestigious cooperative education program and of proud alumni such as Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, entrepreneurs such as TK and even investments in self-driving cars and quantum computing from Mike Lazaridis who graduated from the same university and would go on to be the founder of Blackberry. The future looks bright for the city, enthroned high up in the Great White North. But I have still not told you anything 
about the past of the third child. The story of the third child, Yunyang, lies hidden deep in the past before Christ. Once upon a time, the legendary Chinese emperor and herbalist Shenong was traveling to a distant region and stopped to rest. While the servant began boiling the drinking water of the king, a leaf from a wild tea bush happened to fall into the water. The crystal clear water was now brownish in color, but the brave servant presented it to the emperor anyway. The emperor drank it and found it very refreshing and tea came into being. First, the tea leaves are plucked from the plant by hand, followed by the process of withering, disruption, oxidation, fixation, also known as kilgreen process, sweltering, also known as the yellowing process, rolling, drying, curing, and sorting. Either plastic is used or a few more trees are slaughtered for the paper or cardboard wrapping of the processed tea powder. According to ancient Chinese legend, Shenong died in Tea Hill, which is today known as Chaling County in Hunan. Now, the governor of Hunan is the highest ranking official in the people's government of Hunan. The magic of the peaceful monks of Tibet is their prestige. The Hunan Tibet counterpart assistance symposium kicked off in Lhasa on July 9, 2019 to focus on deepening exchanges and cooperation between both sides. Shaling County now has four sub-districts, ten towns and two townships under its jurisdiction and the county seat is at Yunyang sub-district, the third child. Amidst all the conflict, humanity has realized the nature of peace and its inherent power. While there is violent political unrest, rights and genocide in many other places all over the world, the tribes of these three cities have royal blood coursing through their veins and live in peace and harmony happily ever after.